Hello and welcome everyone to yet another tech enthusiastic video from Edureka. Today we will have a session that gives us a briefing about the right learning path for Java to become a successful Java developer. Now let's not waste much time and quickly dive into our agenda for today's session. First, we shall understand the ground basics once before we actually get started and it should only take a couple of minutes. Then we will move on to core Java. Followed by that we shall enter the different basic development fields that a Java developer can enter after getting certified and also have a briefing about the frameworks that need to be learned to get in. Then we will move into core Java. Followed by that we shall enter the different basic development fields that a Java developer can enter after getting certified and also have a briefing about the frameworks to be learned to get in. I hope you are clear with my agenda. Now let's quickly begin our first topic that is basics for Java. To get started with Java first you need to understand how Java behaves. So what exactly is the way it communicates with the end user? Its compiler, its interpreter, the JVM and its terminology. In Java we do have a compiler. Don't take me wrong but yeah we do have a compiler. So basically when a Java developer writes a code it will be the first decoded and converted into bytecode by the Java compiler. This bytecode is then transformed to the JVM. JVM or Java virtual machine is the one that makes magic happen. Here is where the code is interpreted and the relevant output gets generated. It is because of this virtual machine methodology Java has become platform independent and it can perform its operations regardless of what operating system it is running on. The same code that you have written in a Linux operating system can be run on Windows. Now moving ahead we shall get into the variables, data structures, data types, methods and the libraries available in Java. Similar to the C programming language Java also has all the similar types of variables and data types. We have integer, float, double, string, character are a few to name. So followed by the data types and variables we have the data structures. So data structures is a data organization, management and storage format that enables efficient access and modification. So more precisely a data structure is a collection of data values, the relationships among them and the functions or the operations that can be applied to the data. In Java we have arrays, linked list, everything similar to C programming language and now discussing each one of them deeply would take a lot of time and effort but don't you worry guys I have dropped down a link in the description box that will redirect you to the landing page of Java complete tutorial and also there's a link to the data structures and algorithm videos as well. So your next mission would be to install and set up Java environment in your local system. Don't worry I'll drop a link in the description box below that will clearly explain you to install Java and set up its environment in your local system. Now that we have a briefing about fundamentals let us move right ahead into the next part that is the core Java. So inside core Java we get to learn the basics of OOPS concepts which is nothing but object oriented programming concepts like data abstraction, encapsulation, inheritance and polymorphism. Then we learn about the basic Java constructs like loops and data types, string handling, collection framework, then there is multi-threading, exceptional handling, generics and synchronization. After that we learn about serialization and deserialization, concurrent collection etc. These happens to be the most crucial parts. Edureka has beautifully organized these concepts in a step by step manner with detailed description of technology along with practical examples for a better understanding and also have prepared video tutorials on the same. Followed by core Java we move ahead and learn advanced level of Java programming that will introduce us to the following concepts which is JDBC nothing but Java database connectivity there is servlet, JSP and testing and many more of course so by now you will be able to write uh, programs on your own and also create a beginners project as well but hey wait journey doesn't have to end here every beginner intermediate or a professional programmer always try to learn java to enter into a specific development domain similarly java 2 has multiple development domains into which you can see yourself after mastering java programming language top notch domains you can enter after mastering java are as follows so first one is Android application development then you have big data and cloud there is desktop application development and lastly machine learning and artificial intelligence. Yes you heard me right machine learning and artificial intelligence Java has been evolving since day one and Java which we have seen back in the days and the Java in the current scenario are completely different and its evolution made Java so powerful and capable that one could not only design machine learning algorithms but also many more. Now let's discuss about the frameworks that personal leads to learn to enter into a specific domain. So the first one is Android development. To master Android development using Java one needs to learn the following frameworks which is Corona SDK quite easy to learn and very powerful. 
yes you heard me right corona and please guys let's just stay home and upskill and find ourselves at the best working environments after the pandemic ends and now let's get back to our framework so corona sdk is a cross platform framework for rapidly creating apps and games for mobile and desktop devices that means you can code once and load the apps and games into multiple devices and once and the java platform independence actually is the nature that helps us load the games and apps regardless of the operating system the device is working on after this we have the app builder which is used by some of the principals enterprises across the globe so the app builder framework supports a codeless user interface to enable swift app development it works most excellent when utilized to build information based applications the framework has pre-built blocks for functionalities like push notifications polls feedbacks updates related to content intelligence and analytics best of all it integrates with google play making it uh, probable to publish uh, completed apps with just a single click then we have a phone gap which is being sponsored by adobe and apache and it actually works as a cross-platform application it is the most trendy android app development framework around the globe and it comes from the team following apache cordova which is an open source mobile development framework that utilizes C, SS3, HTML5 and JavaScript for cross-platform development and is entirely open source. At its heart is an instinctive desktop application utilized to build apps and serve those applications to link mobile devices. At the end of the day, they are no more difficult to understand text commands which can simply turn or get erroneous and are even tough to memorize as an Android developer framework. After that we have Accelerator. The Accelerator Titanium Framework is an integral part of the Accelerator platform which comprises each tool mobile app developers may require in developing, applying to test and the development of the needed apps. The Titanium Framework uses functionalities of JavaScript to call an enormous collection of APIs and these APIs call native features of the operating systems providing incomparable performance as well as native look and feel. Followed by Android development, we have Big Data and Cloud. So servers are the backbone of Big Data and Cloud. So for Java developer, learning server-side programming is mandatory. First one would be Spring, with its concept of dependency injection and aspect-oriented programming features. Spring took the development world by storm. It is an open-source framework used for enterprise applications. With Spring, developers can create loosely coupled modules wherein dependencies are handled by the framework rather than depending on the libraries in the code. Then we have struts. Apache struts is another robust open source framework for web applications. It follows the MVC which is model view controller model and uh, extends the JSP API. In a traditional servlet JSP approach, if a user submits let's say a form with his details, the information then goes to a servlet for processing or the control goes over to the next JSP. This becomes confusing for complex applications as the view or the presentation layer should ideally not have business logic. Then we have Hibernate. Though Hibernate is not a full stack framework, it completely changed the way we looked at the database. Implementation of Java Persistent API or we can also call it as JPA. Hibernate is an object relational mapping or ORM database for Java applications. Just like SQL, queries in Hibernate are called HQL, like Hibernate Query Language. Hibernate directly maps Java classes to corresponding database tables and vice versa. And then we have Apache Wicket. So if you have already worked with JSP, the learning Wicket will be a cakewalk. A simple web application framework, Wicket has a component-oriented structure and all you need to know is Java and HTML. Absolutely no XMLs or configuration files. Wicket is lightweight and you can build applications really fast. It is also easy to unit test code written in Wicket. Then we have Java server faces. So don't confuse JSF with JSP, which is just a text document that can have static and dynamic content. So JSF is developed by Oracle as a part of the Java Enterprise Edition 7. It is a component based MVC framework and has reusable UI components for server based applications. The main idea is to encapsulate various client-side technologies like CSS, JavaScript, and HTML that will allow developers to create UI without knowing any of these technologies in depth. So they can just drag and drop UI components and focus more on their presentation layer specifics. Next in the docket is the desktop development. So to master desktop development using Java, one needs to learn the following frameworks, which is Blade, nothing but a simple application framework with a minimal footprint, and Blade is a lightweight and high performance Java framework 
that allows you to build fast web applications in a straightforward way. The creators want users to understand the whole framework in a single day. Therefore, Blade focuses on the simplicity and elegance. Then we have Drop Wizard, which is nothing but a production ready RESTful web services. So, Drop Wizard is a high performance but straightforward Java framework for rapid development of RESTful web services. It's especially suitable for creating Java microservices. Then we have Grails, which is a groovy based web application framework. And Grails is a web application framework that uses the groovy programming language. And Groovy is an object oriented language for the Java platform that intends to enhance developer productivity. Its syntax is compatible with Java and it's compiled to JVM, which is Java Virtual Machine Bytecode. Then we have Google Web Toolkit, which is a client side Java apps deployed as JavaScript, or the Google Web to Toolkit is a brilliant web framework created by Google. In fact, GWT fulfills the dream of every developer who wants to build Java apps for the web. As it allows you to write client side Java code and deploy it as JavaScript for the browser. And then we have Hibernate, which is an object relational mapping framework for a better database communication. Hibernate is a stable object relational mapping framework that makes better communication possible between the Java programming language and relational database management systems. And also, with these, one needs to learn to build tools, GitHubs, and uh, design patterns. So the build tools like Maven, Gradle, and software development methodologies like DevOps and continuous integration and continuous deployment helps programmers excel in the process of software development. The GitHub helps programmers to stay updated with all their codes and pull requests. Design patterns are like the predefined and tested recipes for programmers to design their softwares in the perfect ways to avoid all possible bugs in their coding approach. And I will have the design patterns in Java article and tutorial video linked in the description box below for better learning. So with this we come to the end of this tutorial guys. If you have any queries regarding this session, then please write down to us in the comment section below and we will respond to you at the earliest. Till then, thank you and wish you all the very best and happy learning. And don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on Edureka. And if you are looking for a certification program to learn Java programming language, the link is given in the description box below.